yes people what is happening welcome back to lily white lane italy won england won italy win euro 2020 on penalties and look before i delve into everything to do with this game as i say i want to say congratulations to italy i want to say congratulations as i say they really really did put in an effort this tournament considering they didn't even qualify for the last world cup as i say mancini completely turns around this team as i say they've had a brilliant tournament and, you know, fair do so they went on to win it. So, fair play to Italy, as I say. But, look, let's take a look at this game, as I say. It's, it's a hard game to take a look at. And I also want to say, you know, I was going to do a video last night like I do after most Euro, uh, Euro games, as I say. And this was the last one, and I was going to do it last night. But, look, as I say, getting a taxi back from the box park in London was tough, and I didn't get in until half one in the morning. So, look, as I say, there was no real point. You know, going on uh, last night, as I say, about 2 o'clock in the morning about how gutted I am when, you know, I can do a video today just as gutted but can actually discuss the game a little more, as I say, once I've went back and rewatched bits and bobs from it. So, look, before I delve into some of the talking points of the game, I say, I say congratulations to Italy. I want to say there is no need whatsoever to be negative about this England team. There's no need whatsoever to be negative about our performance in the final or throughout the tournament. It's been a very, very good um, tournament for England. Our first final since 1966, right? 55 years, almost 56 years. It will be 56, but look, 55 years, right? 55 years since we won, uh, since we last got to a final of a tournament, as I say. And look, over the past 20 years, ever since we've had this golden generation people talk about, we've been getting knocked out in the group stage, not even qualifying for certain tournaments. As I say, you know, going out in the round of 16 to some awful team like Iceland or whatever, it's just not been good at all. And ever since 2018, you can clearly see there's a change with this England team. We're much more positive, as I say. We got to the semis of the last World Cup and we got to the final. So the next step surely has to win it. And look, as much as I'm gutted, I'm not disappointed. I'm not disappointed one bit. I'm I'm almost proud. I, I, and I never thought I'd be saying that. I never actually thought I'd be saying after my country lost in the final that I was proud of them. But look, I'm saying I'm proud because we didn't lose. We lost on penalties, right? A one-all draw, put up a great fight against an unbeaten and an unstoppable Italian team, as I say. Ever since, what, 2018, they haven't lost a game. I, th I think it's 34 games unbeaten now so look the only team to beat us and they didn't beat us in the 90 minutes they needed to go to penalties to do us really really good effort against Denmark as I say had to get the job done there brilliant brilliant performance against Ukraine emotion love's got the world in motion everything in that Germany game that was brilliant and the group stage you know a couple 1-0 wins I say not the best performance against Scotland but I'll take that if it gets us to we have every single right to be proud, every single right to be proud because of the journey this England team has went on throughout this tournament, the effort they've given in all honesty, the passion they've showed for the three lines on their chest, as I say. So look, we've got nothing to be gutted about. I mean, not nothing to be gutted about, but we've got nothing to be angry about or disappointed about when it comes to this performance, right? Because you have to look at it from that standpoint. You have to sit back for a minute and take a look at it as... It's been a brilliant tournament. It's been an absolutely brilliant tournament for us, as I say. And look, the next step surely has to be winning uh, winning the thing. Hopefully, we can get something done in Qatar next November, I believe it is. But look, that's a discussion for another day. So, let's go through some of the talking points of the game. So, two minutes in, Luke Shaw straight away. A brilliant, brilliant ball by Harry Kane uh, to feed through, uh, I believe it was Trippier, who plays a lovely, lovely ball over the top. No one marking Shaw, and he takes advantage. He sort of slices it, but it goes in, and that's all I cared about. And I was going absolutely wild, absolutely loving life. And look, ever since we scored that goal, we were all over Italy in that first half. Constant pressure, constant attack in play. As I say, brilliant on the ball, creating chances, you know, every couple of minutes. It was absolutely brilliant. And then the second half rolls around, and I can understand why we wanted to take a negative approach, although attacking was working, you know, you're 1-0 up in a final. You do not want to concede a goal. You want it to end in the 90 minutes. But look, it didn't work. It didn't work sitting back. As soon as we sat back, you could see certain players were uncomfortable in certain defensive positions. And the shambles of a goal we conceded, as I say, 
Bonucci puts it in. It sort of, you know, sort of goes as I say. No one really gets their head on it. He, he, well, it's headed on by Di Lorenzo, I believe. Pickford has to make a save, as I say, when he doesn't really need to make a save. He can just claim it. But as I say, straight after that, Bonucci there to smash it in. And Bonucci, from, you know, in my opinion, is the player of the tournament. But we'll do that tomorrow, as I say. I'll get to that later in the video and discuss what we'll be doing tomorrow. But look, Bonucci gets it in, as I say. Really, really good goal. Well, well, not a really, really good goal. I'm just used to saying that, as I say, old habit. But look, Italy score, as I say, 1-1, one, one, extra time. Not much really happens. I think, you know, for, for the first half and the entire of uh, the entirety of extra time, England were by far the better team. But Italy had, as I say, that half an hour spell where we sat back, where they just pressed and pressed and pressed. And you cannot allow this unstoppable, as I say, Italy team who are you basically every single player in their team is a goal machine you cannot allow them to come on to you because the more the ball they get the more comfortable they feel on it and we should have known that but look goes to penalties as I say Bukayo Saka misses his penalty Marcus Rashford uh, misses his penalty as I say and uh, Jaden Sancho misses his look it really is going so straight away um, Kane as I say first uh, smashes it in as I say after Do uh, after Dominico Berardi as I say he puts it in good penalty Kane really really clean penalty as I say after that it's actually saved Jordan Pickford with his first save of the shootout as I say really really good save to stop Belotti and straight after that I'm thinking Harry Maguire why is the defence taking the penalty he proved why he's taking the penalty because he absolutely rifles it into that top right hand corner a really good pen. And I thought we were going to win it. I really did think Pickford's got it now. I think we've got it. But just do not yet. Don't let the likes of Saka take it. And that's nothing towards Saka. Because as much as being a Spurs fan, when it comes to England duty, I love Saka as a player. But look, as I say, I'm saying, you know, let Henderson take one if you can. Let someone like Trippy or Walker take one. Let someone with some experience take one. Sterling, potentially. Sancho and Saka step up. Fair play to them, as I say. But they both miss it. They both miss it. As I say, Pickford makes a save before that. Marcus Rashford hits the post. Jorginho's penalty is actually safe for once. But as I say, Benucci scores his in the last one. Safe by Donnarumma. Now look. Absolutely gutted. Absolutely gutted. But got, uh, got to keep our head held up. I'm sorry I wasn't in the best mood for this video. It's generally because my voice is just really, really hurting at the moment. You know, hence, hence, hence the fact, as I say, I'm so gutted because of all the screaming that I did last night. But my voice is killing me. I promise you I'll be more upbeat the next time we do a video. But thank you for watching this if you're still watching this, as I say. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And as always, come on you Spurs.